All right, my friends, it's time to say goodbye to 2023. Adios. Hello to 2024. Say thank you to you and let you know what's coming up. So let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you're watching another great episode of Toolbox Topic, end of year summary and talk about uh, what's going on in 2024. Yeah, I'm joined once again by my co-host mm -hmm. Brandon Van Loop. And Brandon, how the hell are you? Feel good. Nice, glad to hear it. <laughs> I mean, it really hasn't been a week. We just did a video, you yeah. know, because <laughs> remember we do these in bunches guys, so. <laughs> um, and once again, we're at the Check Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona, because it's where the cool kids hang out, huh? and me, and as I alluded to in the introduction, we are going to talk about 2023, kind of a brief year in review. Um, we're gonna talk about what's coming up in 2024, maybe some things we'd like to see in the biking industry, as well as what's coming up with Get Out Arizona. And uh, yeah, you know, you'll probably hear me say it a couple times during this video, but thank you. It's been a great year for Get Out Arizona. Um, right now we're experiencing tremendous growth, uh, about 250 subscribers a month. That's Good. because of you guys, yeah, um, and your support and your suggestions and stuff, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's talk about 2023, kind of the year in review, and for me, it's kind of one of the reasons why we chose this bike in here. I mean, this this was badass. When this came out, this was really, for Trek, the pinnacle of their e-bikes, whether it was uh, Road with the pedal assist and the Domani, or here with Mountain, this kind of surplanting the rail, which was about seven, eight pounds heavier. Right. Um, and there was a lot of reviewers who got their hands on it, I didn't, that was saying <laughs> this was going to usher in the next um, evolution of pedal assist for mountain biking because of the design and the technology that goes oh. into this. Um, and this is the Fuel EXE. And I'll link the video up top because we did a bike showcase on it. And yeah, F and sexy. Yeah, we're yeah, proud you know. of we're. I'm proud of this bike. Yeah. They did a very nice job with this. I have to say, um, it's just not a full blown like you own the rail. I did. It just doesn't. It's so much more refined. Yes. Than the rail. Yeah. The, this the, one where where the rail really makes you feel like you're riding an e-bike. This bike really makes you feel like, hey, I'm pretty damn good at riding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more stealthy, too. Absolutely. Super you can stealthy. probably, I have to convince people that it's an e-bike sometimes. Right. I'll show them that and like, this is not an e-bike. I'm like, I work here, trust me. Trust and look me. at that. There's yeah. a control unit. There's your motor right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so that's it was a good some, thing. It is a good thing. Yep. It is a good thing. And I think once this was released, though, we saw new offerings from Specialized and Pivot, who's really dumping a lot of money into R&D um, and has some nice offerings there. And it's nice because releases like these, like this, drive the industry. It is, it, it is, it was a groundbreaker, yeah. I feel like. And everybody wins mm -hmm. at that point as far as consumers. Yeah. Um, I think another groundbreaker was uh, Shimano going to, or starting to pivot to a wireless shifting system and not relying on the DI2 um, even though that was battery operated, but you still had a, a shift by mm -hmm. wire. Um, and I think that's gonna lead to great things within help. the industry too. Yeah, since we're talking about Shimano, to me, the biggest thing is they just released this year and it'll be really a, um, an obvious thing this coming year in 2024, the, the Q's uh, Grupo. So Q's is going to totally eliminate um, Acera, Altus, and Alivio. Oh. And Dior 1011 speed. Okay. All same shift ratios. They're all compatible for the most part. They're all very compatible nice. together. So from where I stand on this side of the wall, it's gonna make my job a lot easier for bikes that are coming in the future. So, um, so it's a unified group for that lower mid range right. to entry yeah, level. Yeah, they're getting rid of like six six groups and nice. it's combining them into one. Very nice. And they're gonna have the opportunity, so they're gonna also gonna get rid of, I think, not get rid of, but also, re yeah, get rid of, <laughs> Tiagra. Okay. So you can intermingle the mountain group with Tiagra, which will now be called Q's, mm -hmm. drop bar shifters. Right. All the pull ratios will be interchangeable, so that'll help people nice. mix and match a little bit better. It's gonna help us do our job better. We won't have to carry so much stuff in right. the shop to, <laughs> to replace. Um, and it looks good. It, it performs really well. It's all, all new shifting technology. Right. And I hope this is a trend for the next coming years because they're also eliminating 3x. Three 3x three is now, thankfully, 3x is gone. 
for Shimano. They're getting right. rid of that. So that we're phasing out the stuff that yeah. um, that should have been phased out probably starting a couple, a few years ago. Right. Um, the things I told people that were going to be gone, now they really are going away. Yeah, and that's nice. It's nice that we're yeah. seeing. And again, this is what the evolution of the industry is. Am I going to sit here and tell you that the three by nine might not work for you as far, or won't work for you as far as like maybe a touring bike or a backpacking bike mm -hmm. because you want to have specific gear ratio? No. All I'm saying is, is this the evolution? And when we talk about, you know, uh, percentages as far as our shifting percentages and ratios and stuff, we're seeing a lot of those achieved with, you know, the one by yeah. and going and with that larger. 12, like said, yeah. 10, 10, 11, 12 with a larger range in the back. Yeah. It's much more efficient. It's much less to work on. It's all around, all around better. Absolutely. Now and they're still giving a two by offering right. for some things, which is not a bad idea. Nope. Um, I think that's going to be around for a little bit longer. Yeah. But I, for I most think people, so especially on the non-bike side, go to one by. It's yeah. Well, and we've seen even some uh, gravel bikes, and and I don't know if cyclocross how relevant that still is because to me cyclocross just I think it's just a you know hopped up version of gravel biking. Um, but we've seen some of those bikes go to one buys as well. And again, we're talking about the gear ratio and what we're setting up on the cassette in the back mm -hmm. um, to eliminate the need to shift. You're, you're removing one more mechanical part that can fail on you, not can, but will eventually fail on you. And again, we're adding to the overall efficiency. Yep. Um, some might disagree, chime down in the comments if you do, we'd love to hear your opinion. <laughs> but I just, again, we're, this is the evolution as far as where we're going. Um, and then as far as drivetrain and shifting and everything, we also saw SRAM release their new transmission uh, right. group set, which I can't wait to get my hands on that and put it on Esmeralda. We'll definitely have a video on that. Um, and the great thing about that is now you have electronic shifting that you're able to shift under tremendous load. Right. No longer do you have to ease back and make your shift. You know, SRAM even tells you, yeah, hammer away on that thing. And that is bomb proof. Yeah. A lot of the reviewers we saw were abusing that derailleur just to prove how uh, rugged it, a design it was. So SRAM has really put itself yeah. once again in the, in the forefront for uh, wireless uh, shifting, wireless transmissions. And again, from my point of view, the thing I like about it is it only works together. So I don't have to think about compatibility issues. Right. I don't have to, all that stuff is like, it all goes together. Yep. It all sets up together. Um, it's, it's designed that way. So the less thinking I got to do, the better. <laughs> That's right. He's, he's not a thinker, guys. <laughs> we've, we've talked about this before, you know. And what we've also talked about before is hitting the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon mm -hmm. so you can stay tuned and uh, in touch with all our new offerings when they show up. You know, because we appreciate that stuff. Way to sneak here. it in. Yeah. You always do. <laughs> I try to anyway. Sometimes I forget because I'm not always the sharpest tool in the box. Um, so, yes. So the SRAM wireless shifting, and again, um, that's driving innovation. And it was nice because when SRAM initially introduced their wireless shifting, it was in XO and XO1. It was very expensive and essentially out of reach for a lot of riders. But now we see that trickling down to GX yeah. and SX shifting as well affordable, very affordable. Right, and we use that term sometimes loosely mm, around here, and that's why I did the air quotes. <laughs> um, and we understand sometimes, you know, you guys have commented, and it's been like, hey, that's not really that cheap. And so we want to be cognizant that yes, someone who has a budget and, you know, they're getting a Marlin 5, you know, obviously $1,100 for a new group set is not going to be affordable to them. And we realize that, but for the most part, compared to what it was, $2,500 and, to get yourself into that complete group to now being able to get the derailleur and the shifter for right around $600, that, that's that's pretty darn good, yeah. you know? And again, it drives the industry. We're seeing Shimano Campanello had a wireless offering, you know, this year. It wasn't very good, but <laughs> they had one. <laughs> Poor Campanello. Um, <laughs> but nice. It's nice to see. And what we've seen in frame technology, geometry, um, a lot of research and R&D going from various different manufacturers to uh, refine the ride and make the ergonomics of riding not just mountain bike, but road bikes as well. Um, speaking of the, the Madone. The new Madone came yeah. out this year too. Ah, 
freaking beautiful. That and was that a, SLR that was a 7. Did. Trek did a good job this year. They did. They came out this guy, they came out with the new Madone and also the High Pivot Slash. The High Pivot Slash was another one. We'll uh, see how that one goes this year. Yeah. I mean, it's brand new. We'll see. Yeah. I think this will be the year we see if people really get behind it. I think not. people will. And just like yeah. when Apple said, oh, we're getting rid of the legacy and just going to USB-C, quote unquote, Thunderbolt, <laughs> a lot of people were angry and, and shunned it and scoffed at it. Um, but now, you know, the USB-C and Thunderbolt protocol is, that's it. And I actually get irritated with manufacturers who are still clinging on to legacy ports. So in that regards, we have to continue to move forward and, and, and leave that stuff behind. Um, you know, there's, there's no longer a place for it, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. Um, but yes, when we saw that Madone, um, I was taken aback just how gorgeous that was and how smooth it rode. And how simple that, it is now too. Oh, it's much more simple without the use of the ISO speed. Right, ridiculously simple. And I think what we saw when they released that SL7, was the SLL7 that we did the thing mm -hmm. on or the SLR7? But it was like, it became like the most affordable high-end road bike you can get. Yeah. Um, came with an amazing group and again, that's good for the riders who can't afford that or in that bracket. Now it's not, Jesus, I'm <laughs> I'm buying another car at you know yeah. twelve thousand dollars for yeah. a high end bike. They were able to get something high end, very high end, at that seven thousand dollar mark. Every and we year. know that's expensive, guys. We do, but every it, year you get more for your money at yep. the lower entry levels. Uh, right. That trickle down technology is always benefiting the entry level market. Absolutely, absolutely. And this year should be. The yeah. same thing. I, I think it will be. Um, we've seen advancements in some safety uh, technology. Um, our lighting uh, systems that we use now on our bikes, uh, whether the flashing lights on the front, the radar systems on the back from Garmin had some improvements. Mm -hmm. um, we've also seen better integration with our watches, whether that's Apple Watch or the Garmin Watch with our computers. Um, I don't think helmet technology has really had any advancements this year. Mm, um, some refinements in design and lighter weight, especially with the full-faced helmets and more airflow, um, which is a plus because a lot of times I am wearing a full-face helmet because this is ugly enough. I need to protect what little I have left <laughs> as far as that goes. Oh, um, I know. It's, nice. it, was, it was horrible being the ugly kid as I turn on the other light that <laughs> friggin', you know. But... Mm -hmm. I got a sense of humor and I'm snappy dresser, so <laughs> hey, you know, it makes up for it. So, um, so yeah, so all around 2023 was good for the industry, I think, as a whole. Um, and I'm excited to see what we're going to get in 2024. I think some driver systems on the back. Um, I think not a redesign, but a refinement of that because I'm always torching <laughs> mm -hmm. my drivers um i would like to see some some uh refinements in the braking system too you know like um, what i would like to see everything switch maybe to a four piston a little bit larger rotor um but something that's a little bit more efficient on the lever side of it mm -hmm. so your pool um is consistent throughout, that mechanical advantage is consistent throughout, whether your pads are wearing down or not. I'd like to see something along the lines. Mm. I don't know if they can do it, maybe. I don't know. So <laughs> I never thought about it. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> and Brandon and I were talking about this, we were equipping about it a couple weeks ago. I'm wondering if this is the year we might start seeing prototypes for wireless braking. Uh, there already is one out. Okay. Someone made one with RC part servos. Okay. So it's out there. It's out there. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> there you go. You know, I guess it's already out and my bubble's been bursted. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> Jerk. See, it's always the good looking guys that are going to burst your uh, bubble. I don't think it worked as well, but it, I mean, someone started. Right. So that's all it takes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> An idea to get from, you know, paper to, to prototype is definitely the step in the right direction. Yeah. I think we're going to see some advancements too in suspension uh, this year. Um, Rock shock, um, I think, is due to make another another leap. Um, I, I think we're going to see as far as materials, efficiency, weight. That's kind of you know. Yeah, that's always step. that's always the goal. Yep, to, uh, uh, lighter and better. So um, lighter, I don't think it's going to be cheap. cheaper. <laughs> I, I think the next. The goal. Yeah, I think the next iteration from Rock Shock is going to be easily a thousand dollars more or more, um, but we're going to save a significant weight on that. Um, and then yeah, I mean. So I would like to see 
uh, stronger rim set, um, something. To, but and it's not that I'm breaking mine left or right, but let's face it, you know, um, some of the riders out there these days are, are bigger guys and gals, and so they need something that's going to be resilient on that. So, right. um, yeah. Other than that, man, just freaking, I love all the cool new shiny shit. It doesn't no matter what it is. So, yeah. Um, now that we've kind of talked about the year in review going into 2024 on that. Let's talk about Get Out Arizona. Let's talk about where we're at. Um, this has been our best year um, currently right now, and this is a huge part to you guys, a thank you to you. Uh, we're averaging about 240, 250 new subscribers a month, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, we couldn't thank you enough. Uh, we look to hopefully by the end of 20, 2024 be somewhere around 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 plus subscribers, right? When we started, man, it was rough. <laughs> and this is actually, I want to say our first video was January 1st, 2021. So 2021, 22, 23. We've been doing this for three years, guys. And it was rough in the beginning. We had some growing pains. But thanks to you, your feedback and everything, Brandon and I finding our stride with doing it. Um, yeah, we're there, and we're going to continue to improve and refine. Now, when it comes to Toolbox Topic, we actually have a list. A plan? A plan Heaven of forbid. 52 great episodes, <laughs> okay, of maintenance for your bikes, ranging from everything from how to adjust your derailleur system, whether that's a rear derailleur or a front derailleur, and whether we're doing that back from here or up at the shifters, or rebuilding and maintenancing your clutch, your driver, your brakes, your suspension, seat post, you name it, guys. We're going to be covering it. And we've got more bike showcases on the way yeah. as bikes arrive and allow. We have more great episodes of Garage Talk where we will do some in-depth reviews, not only of road and mountain biking uh, gear and accessories, but... That great gear that I love doing the videos with when I'm out on the trail with you guys. So it's going to be, you know, great, uh, great times there as far as what we're going to learn. Um, some how-to videos in, in that section as well. Um, and then, yeah, as always, the comment section down below is an open forum. Be respectful. That's all we ask. We don't necessarily want you to agree with us. We want to hear your opinion. We just don't want you to be a friggin' ass clown <laughs> when you're giving it. There's, there's no cause for that. And if there is something specific that you would like to see us address or talk about in a toolbox topic or a garage talk episode, please let us know. Um, if it's within our means, we will definitely do that because that's one of the reasons why we made the channel was for you guys and to share that knowledge with you and help you along your journey. So, I don't know, Brandon. Is there anything else you want to add? I mean, friggin', you're just, just much have to wait and see. Me. Just have to wait and see. Except I can't get him to go hiking or mountain biking with me <laughs> to save my life. He is anti. <laughs> he is discriminatory when it comes to those two two practices. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and then he's a self hater as a roadie too. So what are you gonna do as far as that goes? So, um, yeah. But seriously. We appreciate you. Um, with all sincerity, we understand that our channel is a little bit different than other channels in this genre. Um, Brandon and I aren't professional riders. We've never claimed to be professional riders. Um, you've got outfits like Global Mountain Net uh, Biking Network, um, uh, Pink Bike, those guys I don't even want to talk about right now. They get now. all the fancy editing and all um, the fancy products. Yeah, they get, you know, and, and it's a different thing. <clears throat> We're just two guys who love bikes. Brandon happens to own a shop, and I just ride the party pace out on the trail or the road, okay? So when we talk to you, it's from a, a different part where Brandon lives the maintenance part every day, and I'm out there every day. Not every day, I wish. I can get that. that um, and, and giving you our opinions on what we see as just the average person. And I think that's very, very important um, because, sure, it's nice to know what the pros think, but... 95% of us aren't pros, and we're not going to necessarily ride like pros, so mm -hmm. um, as far as that goes. And it's not knocking those channels. God bless them. They do a great job, but we're definitely that channel for the average person, and we appreciate um, all the support that you guys give us. Um, it keeps us going. It's, you know, why we do this channel. So on that note, my friends, we want to say Merry Christmas to you, although when you guys see this, 
Christmas will have already passed, so <laughs> oh. happy belated Merry Christmas, right? But it is Christmas Eve. <laughs> Have a fantastic night tonight. Please, for the love of all creatures, big and small, be safe, all right? We want you to start and usher in the new year with the wise decisions. Try to anyways. So you can get out on that trail, whether you're hiking or biking or walking. And again, what do we always say to the tenants at this point? I'm not even going to do the usual stick, but what do we do this for, all right? Is to be kind to yourself and others, all right? Love yourself. Educate those people on the trail. Be kind to those people you know, make a difference in someone's life. Being a good steward on the trail, all right? It, it encompasses a lot, whether it's trail maintenance, you see the trails in disarray, so you'd stop. Take five, 10 minutes out of your ride or your hike and put that trail back together, okay? Pick up the trash as you see it and everything. Help do those community things that keep our trails beautiful, hikeable and rideable for everybody, okay? Don't have the attitude, well, I didn't do it, so I'm just gonna leave it there or someone else can do it. Be that person, be the catalyst for others to follow your good example. And again, guys, what are you waiting for? Get out of Arizona. <laughs> kind of lackluster for the end of the year, but <laughs> <laughs> he's had to do it at least, you know, 52 times. I can't necessarily blame him, but yes, guys, get out Arizona. Get up, get out, enjoy life for everything that it has to offer. Share that with a friend. Inspire someone else to do the same. And I'll tell you what, you could be a whole lot happier. Trust me, I guarantee it. So on that note, guys, seriously, from all of us here at Get Out Arizona to all of you guys that have supported us either recently with a new sub or from the get-go, and you guys know who you are, Obi-Wan, um, thank you so much. We look forward to having a fantastic 2024 and catching up with you again soon. All right, guys, take care. Brandon, All right. we'll see you next week. Happy New Year. Next year, actually. Happy yeah, New technically, Year. Yeah, Happy New Year, man. Take care, everybody. <laughs>